Welcome to Knights of Roleplay, an adventuring podcast. This is an actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Royalty free music provided by Kevin McLeod, Michael Gelfi Studios, Plate Mill Games, and Tabletop Audio. And now, to adventure. Hello listeners, thank you for joining us for this episode of Nets of Roleplay. I'm DM Chris, we are continuing with Cult of the Cave Crickets. Be advised, some of the scenes depicted in this horror adventure are graphic in nature. Our group of adventurers consists of Riki, a kobold fighter, Quinn, an elf warlock, Jin, a human fighter warlock, Wit, a Kanku sorcerer, and Rowan, a human war cleric. As our adventure begins, your group has been employed by Professor Barnabas Ward, Professor of Law and Jurisprudence at the Blackwood College of Ancient Mysteries, to find the rest of his expedition. The expedition had set out to find a fallen star along the edge of the known world before encountering a fierce snowstorm at their camp, fleeing into the nearby caves, and being attacked by unseen monsters. Upon your arrival, you investigated the remains of the camp and found three bodies, along with hieroglyphs describing Mycelorax, the great fungal lord. You found evidence of large cricket-like creatures and eventually found yourselves exploring the, the nearby caves. Inside the caves, you faced many dangers, including damaging rocks in an underground river, a devouring bog, creatures with tentacles coming out of their faces, a constricting tunnel, and statues that attacked you near an underground lake. You found uh, a guard named Rowan with a wound on his back containing a fungal infection that has slowly been getting worse. You also found Professor Davenport, the leader of the expedition, who was trying to muster the courage to attempt to rescue Professor Kerwin. She was captured by the cricket-like creatures called Krikari. She was brought to a shelf overlooking a ravine full of thousands of Krikari. As you climbed out of the caves and onto the shelf, you saw the enormous fungal lord Mycelorax moving toward you from the Black Mountain. On the shelf were Professor Kerwin, a handful of Krikari, and a bifurcated meteor. From inside the meteor, you could see a portal with a hooked beak and partially invisible tendrils at its center. Knowing that Mycelorax plans to rip the meteor in two, thereby opening the portal and allowing fungus to spread across the world, you engaged in combat with the Kakari in an attempt to save Professor uh, Kerwin and close the portal. Uh, instead of continuing with Theater of the Mind, which is what we were doing last time, I'm using a map in miniatures for the second half of this fight. I'm using Loki, uh, Loki's Big Book of Battle Maps, Volume 3, pages 59 and 60, as well as Loki's add-on scenery for RPG Battle Maps, Magical Effects, which contains pages of reusable decals. Please sponsor us. Please sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, um, there are a total of six Krikari on the shelf with the characters. Wit is adjacent to the meteor, but not adjacent to any Krikari. Rowan is adjacent to the meteor and adjacent to a Krikari. Quinn is five feet from the meteor and adjacent to a different Krikari. Ricky is ten feet from the meteor with three adjacent Krikari. Jin is thirty feet from the meteor with a badly burned Krikari adjacent to her. The, Very medi- badly burned. <laughs> uh, the, the meteor beak is bloodied and one of the four meteor tendrils is bloodied. Uh, let's see. The meteor beak seemed to react badly when Wit spoke loudly while wielding the cudgel. Um, due to the Meteor Beak's screech, Rowan has minus two to his AC until the start of the Meteor Beak's next turn. Uh, an advantage on your next attack, but your turn already went by, so... Disadvantage? Uh, sorry, sorry, disadvantage on the next attack. And I spread the sand. Uh, we are at the top of round four, and on round ten is when my Sealerax will arrive at the Meteor. And that's where we resume our story, or our battle, really. I just want to say, you sounded so happy when you were reading off the list of horrors that we've encountered. <laughs> we've encountered, you know, shambling corpses and <laughs> giant Things crickets. with tentacles yeah. coming out of their face. <laughs> <laughs> and we fortunately survived, so what will happen next? And also, uh, Wit has been having effects from the psychic mutterings that... Oh, that's right. right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. At, the, at the very beginning... Wit is hearing voices. <laughs> at the very beginning of the adventure, Wit, Wit failed the saving throw and entering the camp, and now it's uh, still affecting him. And now he's hearing voices. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so we are at the top of round four, and we're uh, Jin, our human fighter warlock. Okay. Um, let's see here. 
questions because I am trying to think out of the box because this sure. is a pretty heavy situation. Sure, sure. Um, does Professor Kerwin, like, is she tied up, badly injured? Does he, she look functional enough that we could possibly give her direction? Um, she is basically starting to uh, get up onto her feet and looking for a place to run. Okay. And, and Professor so. Davenport is up on the top of the ledge there, which is being blocked. Can someone move okay. that box of cogs into the map? So probably she is too freaked <laughs> the F out for me to hand her uh, the pot of powder that's on wit and say, toss this. Um, why don't you say something to her to try to persuade her? Okay. And make a persuasion check. Okay. And then we'll All see right. how it goes. Uh, but I'm going to run in and that's going to be what I'm going to do to start. Uh, did we get a sense? You told us the last time that the tendrils seem to have reach. Do we have enough spatial sense to have an idea of how far that reaches? Yes, they have a 30 foot reach. Yikes. Okay. They can hug us from everywhere. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Um, huggy, huggy. <laughs> and then, final question with my magical know how, uh, yeah. do I have a sense that the way that the tendrils are like avoided damage from Ricky and stuff? Mm-hmm. Like, does it seem like, can I glean if that would be the same for magical damage as well? I mean, what was the question again? Sorry. The tendrils. The yes. fact that Ricky hit them and because they didn't have enough powder on them, we're guessing, right? That they didn't take damage. Does it seem like they, they would be avoiding magical damage as well for the same reason? It's not a matter of damage. Okay. It's a matter of trying to, to roll on attack and hit. Okay. Okay. All right. That's, but it, that's something that your character doesn't really understand. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, uh, Jin being the worrying sort would be concerned about whether spell damage might not fully hit them either if they aren't. There's fully no in indication the spell of whether or not that is true. Yeah. Or not. We're yeah. just going to have yeah. to try All right, it. And fair see. enough. That's, that's, she's probably going to err on the side of caution. Right now, the we, we have to join the wait and yeah. see tribe. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. The, so the tendrils she, are partially invisible. So people are having a hard so time getting there. She's gonna <laughs> run through this path to basically disengage, or not disengage, but to basically provoke from as few characters po- as possible. So she's gonna take a path here to get in next to Professor Kerwin and Wit. Okay. Um, so she's gonna provoke two attacks from ones who thankfully don't have pack tech. Two attacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thirty feet. I'm thirty feet away. All right. So... Chris should have placed me 30 feet away. We reviewed all of this before the start of the adventure. You should be 30 feet away. Yeah. Are you not 30 feet away? Uh, no, I, she is. Okay. Yeah. Attack number one. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, so that's three opportunity attacks then. No, only two. This one? Oh, because... It's those okay. are two. Uh, those are 10 feet apart. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, AC 14. Uh, on Jin. Yes. Okay. Yep. And AC 15. Uh, let's see here. Also miss. Okay. So let's see here. So free flourish. Can I take the pot of powder mm-hmm. from wit? Yep. And I turn to Professor Kerwin and say, quickly, can you throw this? That's how you're going to persuade and, her. And like, like, like jump, motion up towards the tendrils. Like she should have seen like throw already. the pot. Like, yeah, throw, throw the powder the, in the yeah. pot. So she, she looks terrified. She looks like okay. she's about to run. Okay. What would you say to somebody who is terrified and is about to run <laughs> right. and you wouldn't want them to run? Right. In tenders right. or less. We, right. <laughs> Get <them off>. right. <laughs> Six right. seconds. Uh, Perfect guy. <laughs> the world needs your help. I mean, I already... Uh, c- can you throw this? Like, like motioning like okay. as, as right, make, possible. Make your persuasion yeah, check. Yeah, sure. Which, <laughs> oh, the world needs your help. Right, right. Yeah. Now! <laughs> right. I mean, Jin is more likely to intimidate than persuade. Real real talk. That's uh, But let's see. Who wants to roll tonight? Let's see. <laughs> Lulz. Oh, not that one. Yikes. That'll be a four. Okay, she's, she, she's like... Okay. She's like on the verge of tears right. and she's not even really paying attention. All right, yeah, so she said, I'll do it myself, and, and she tosses the powder up on the tendrils. Okay, so that's been three throws of the powder. Be the third. Yep. Okay, so I gotta track this here. The gamer in me is wondering why we are doing what the enemy was doing when we first saw them. Oh, putting the powder up. Okay, so, so as you Because you guys handed it to me. As, as you move. Um, as you move closer yeah. to the meteor tendrils, yeah. um, they seem to become more and more uh, visible okay. as you get closer and closer to them. Okay. And when you throw the, um, the powder, okay. uh, they seem to be completely visible now. Okay, so they're staying completely, all right. So, so, they, they, so there was something about you moving closer 
that okay. the, your proximity made them start to be uh, easier to see. Okay. And then when you threw the powder, they are now completely visible now, so everybody can see them. Okay. All right, awesome. So yeah, I, I say, light them up and put a hand on which shoulder, and, and, and that's the end of my turn. That's all I can do. <laughs> so I don't actually have to track this, because now it's completely visible, so. Oh, I'm tracking. Okay, one last thing to track. Would have been an awesome if I could have pressure to do that for action you told me, but uh, take it. All right, so that was, that was your turn? Yes, that was my turn. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to say that Professor Kerwin um, gets through this group of people and joins Professor Davenport. Uh, Davenport run away, run away, run away. <laughs> so she's out of the fray. Uh, <laughs> and then we are on to wit our Kenku sorcerer. <laughs> do something witty. <laughs> Fiwa? Um, <laughs> Fiwa. <laughs> Corner cube. Corner cube. Corner cube. I mean, what, what's the Can I have a you have to ask the him if the corner of the cube will hit the stuff better. What's that? She's considering different I can spell do a 15 foot cone or a 15 foot cube. Which would be more like effective the cube in would more effectively encompass everything, but. Uh, I, I and if that cube is thunderous damage, the meteor might not like the thunderous damage because it's a rock. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can figure out what a cube is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, where are the tentacles actually in that very artistic mess of tentacles? They're just all, all they're all part of that space. Okay. Ooh. Do you need multiple tentacles? So if she can hit them all, then game on. That's, yeah. I just handed, for the listeners, I just handed Tara a couple of uh, paper cutout templates that she's using for a 15 foot cone. If you, if you shimmy over towards Rowan, you might get Everybody should get paper cutout templates. Please sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My question is will I still get the beak? That's my biggest question. I would say yes. Okay. So I'm gonna light them up. Light them up. <laughs> so take... this is burning hands. Yeah, I take one big step over towards Rowan, <laughs> and it needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Well, before any of that happens, I need oh. you to roll a d6 for the mutterings. Oh God, <laughs> no! <laughs> Mutter roll. <laughs> That's a six. I think that's the same one you had before. Uh, yeah, you ignored. Yeah. Sorry, you ignored the three and the six. Okay. And did we roll or just move on? Um, no, just 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 re-roll until you get a number that you didn't get before. Okay. <laughs> that's not fair. It's a six again. Stop burning all your sixes. Five. Five. Shit. Okay. <laughs> uh, five. Uh, wits wits voices uh, in his head start to really get to him and Wit is experiencing manic frenzy. The character experiences an intense burst of energy and becomes highly agitated, engaging in erratic movements and actions without clear purpose or direction. And this is different how? <laughs> so we're not noticing any effects from this. <laughs> so my, my party doesn't see anything different. <laughs> okay. Light him up! Light him up! So, I mean, the tentacles are kind of worm like. She's a bird. Yeah, so, these are deck saves. Right? Deck like, the like playing with these. the cups uh, and like, okay. losing their brains. <laughs> uh, so, let's start with the meteor beak. Dexterity is not. I was going to say suit. it's stationary. Yeah, it uh, dodge it. <laughs> 13 is the number to beat. Okay, the meteor beak actually. Um, Momentarily retreats into the portal as the oh. fire comes out, and then comes back out again. Oh, um, oh. cheap! So it, that was it, already damaged, though. It, it got a fourteen. Oh, oh. Uh, but it's it still it's takes half, half damage. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it was already uh, badly damaged. And then so meteor tendril number one is um, fourteen. That passes. Uh, number two is seven. Fail. Number three. This is a natural one. Fail. <laughs> Double fail. Number four is a 60. That passes. Which one, which one was the bloodied one? Um, one of the ones that, that uh, the, the first one. The first one was the bloodied one. So it succeeded, but it was already yep. bloody. Okay. Yep. Cool.
could work out. Okay. okay. So everybody that it succeeded takes five Fiwa. Okay. So and so the bloody tendril uh, burns up. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Anybody that passed takes ten Fiwa. Tail. Uh, that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Passed on my hide. I, I, I like Sarah's interpretation better. Right? I, I'm okay. Everybody takes Pass for me. <laughs> 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 All right. So, uh, pass took five, pass took five, pass took five. Fail took ten, fail took ten. So, um, uh, the media beak was already bloody, so mm-hmm. it's still bloody. Okay. Um, the... Uh, one of the tendrils is burned up completely, and the other three tendrils are bloodied. Awesome. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Fire! 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 Okay. <laughs> Emonies. This, this completely crazy <laughs> bird person just does this awesome work with the, with, the, with the burning hands. All right, so now we are on to the enemies. Uh, so, the meteor beak... Um, is going to use the uh, screeching sound again. Yikes. Uh, so who is within... Let's see, what's the range? Who is within 15 feet of the meteor? Everyone. That's everybody. Everybody. Uh, everybody. <laughs> uh, you, oh, yes. Oh, yes, the veil. Uh, yes. Quinn has the veil of madness, so you are immune to this. Everybody else, make a wisdom saving throw, please. That's not one of my better saves. That's not good enough. Okay, okay, okay. Dash okay. Oh no. <laughs> I hear a lot of grumbling. <laughs> too much stress on wet. <laughs> All right, uh, what did you get on your wisdom save? Seven. Seven. That's perfect. That is a fail. All right, uh, Jin, what did you get? Ten. Ten. That is, let's see, uh, that is a success. Wow, really? Pizza, pizza. Oh, I guess okay. Ben's probably. All right, wow. and then Rowan, what'd you get? Surprise. 18. All right, you nice. passed. I should hope so. And then Ricky. 15. You passed. Okay. So, uh, Wit has minus two uh, to his AC and disadvantage on his next attack. Oh. Wait. Until the beginning of the Meteor Beak's next turn. But there's other things that aren't attacks, though. Yeah, right? like, like, like fire and, and stuff. stuff. Fire. Yeah. Uh, so that was the meteor beak. Are you out of slots unless you buy back with points? Mm-hmm. Let's see, the tendril's going to go for the three people that are right in front of it, which looks like uh, uh, Jin and Wit and Rowan. So let's see, Jin, uh, tendril. Ooh, natural 20. Ooh. Okay. Uh, that is for uh, six. Okay, which is five because of my Five because armor. of the armor. Yeah. All right, and... I have, a, I have a response, okay. um, which is Hellish Rebuke. Okay. That's a dex save? Uh, let me double check yes. here. Point the finger at a creature that damaged you momentarily surrounded by hellish flames. It must make a dexterity saving throw, and it takes 2d10 on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. It got a 15. It got a 15. That is going to be a success, I think, if I can look at my spell save. Yes. Yeah, no, it's... it's level. <laughs> 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 All right, so we've got two D10s here. Come on, big money. Oh, I know. <laughs> that's, well, that's actually respectable. So that would be that would have been 12, so 6 for that success. So this is... Uh, so the tendril hits you, and then there's this, like, burst of... Burst of fire up around it. Six fire, six fire damage. Even okay. it was nimble. Yeah. So, so it hits you with a critical. It gets you, uh, when, you when you weren't quite paying attention and does some good damage on you, and then it gets burned up by the Hellish Tribute. Awesome. Right. Um, two down. In the herd. There's two left. Mm-hmm. Uh, one will attack Wit. Uh, AC... Uh, 50. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that's three damage. And then uh, Rowan. AC 17. So I'm AC 18, so I believe that's a miss. That's a miss, yep. Nice. Put your shield in the oh, way. I think it ended oh, at the beginning of the this turn. Correct. Yep. And then he yep. succeeded on the second go. That is correct. Put my shield up. So that was meteor oh, beak. Kill the party, John. That was tendril, tendril, <laughs> tendril. Yeah, John. He's still stuck in Tomb of Annihilation <laughs> DM mode. <laughs> so there's a cultist on uh, Quinn. 
So the Cultus attacks Quain, uh, AC 11. That would be an issue. Uh, there is uh, one on Rowan, AC uh, 19 that time. Oh, yeah, that hits. Uh, that's for three uh, slashing. Oh, quit it. <laughs> Stop it. And then there are, are three on Riki who oh. all have pack tactics. <laughs> oh, Riki. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky also rolled poop on his second win last adventure. <laughs> he did. Uh, attack number one. Uh, wow, that's two very high numbers. Uh, <laughs> AC uh, 19. Yeah, a little bit. For three. Uh-oh. Bloody. <laughs> Join uh, the club. Then, oh, Sarah, could you get out the letter markers for me, please? Oh, yeah. Um, and second attack, AC 14. Myth. And third attack, AC 9. Myth, myth. I okay. am. All right, so Sarah. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, if you could put an, an F on the one that's out there by itself and make it bloodied. Thank you. That was my plan because this guy's gonna be E. <laughs> so E is on me. E's on you. <laughs> those markers are cool. Thank you. Uh, Kate, Kate made those I markers made for us. Really? Yeah, I can tell you how it wasn't too bad to do. That's cool. Yeah. They're they're double sided and they're green on one side and they're red on the other for I bloody. Like yeah, what you do is you just get a pack of googly eyes and you peel out the googly <laughs> eye and you stick that in there and you stick them together. No. Really? You're not far okay. from what I'm like, there. I mean, there I, are don't you must clear. be some black park he's, over. He's definitely fucking with you. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. I mean, uh, I was, as you were saying, I'm looking at it going, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Got it, yeah. Don't clear stickers for jewelry making, and then I printed two-sided. I had to really align my templates so that things were perfectly aligned back to front and did the black and the red on opposite sides, so cut out the paper and centered them on the little stickers. Let's see those. Yeah. They also have um, arrows on them. So yeah. if there's a marker in the middle of like 10 people, you know which person it's pointing at. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. All right. And then there's one more. The very badly bloody one is going to go run over there and take a swing at uh, Quinn. Cool. Yep. Yeah. So move that up next to the other dude. I think he'd probably only be able yeah. to get in that thing. Uh, AC 18. That will hit. For oh, three. After I have a response to that. Okay. Uh, more hellish like, rebuke. Wait, you yes. can do that. I held just blast. I held just blast. I held rebuke. I held rebuke. Hell is rebuke on a cultist. Uh, he didn't wait to make two warlocks, guys. I, <laughs> I got, I got a three on the same throw. It's like I went into the right, tomb of annihilation with a monk. For me. Okay, so so it fails Four against your hellish rebuke. All right, so Four. let me roll the damage. Two d ten. I like this track. <laughs> Three. Three? Yeah. Oh, six total. Yeah. I thought it was 30, but okay. Uh, but that, that was the badly bloody cultist, though, so your hellish abuse kills the cultist. Yeah. Nice! <laughs> what did you get? Krikari cultist. <laughs> quick, quick, quick. All right. <clears throat> so that is He's all the bad guys. Hitting. Uh, now we're on to, uh, Rowan, our human war player. I'm gonna, uh, beak is within smashing range for me? Yes. I smashed the beak. All right. Um, AC 17 for that hits. my max damage of nine. Nine. So you crush that meteor beak and it falls to pieces. Yay, no more creatures. Oh, for the orphans! <laughs> I forgot about that already! <laughs> 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 Is that a turn, Rowan? Uh, yes. I don't think I have any bonus, bonus actions action I can do. Stuff that you can do. Just healing her, but you were saving that probably from him. Yeah, some I mean, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's oh, Rowan. So, so uh, Ricky, our kobold fighter. <laughs> okay, so there's two tentacles remaining, yes? Correct. They are uh, both bloodied. They are both bloodied. <laughs> yes, they both bloodied. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see, the beak gone. Let's see. 
Would you say both tentacles are within 10 feet of me? I would say yes. Okay. And I've got one, two, three, four crickets within 10 feet of me. That's true. Okay. You got a lot of crickets Three around. Hugs. You got a lot of crickets. <laughs> you look very tiny. You're drawing. I, I look very tiny. You're I doing look your very fighter pathetic. job. Poor Ricky. Ricky is so pretty. Ricky. Ricky is pathetic. Ricky is pretty stark. Small and crunching. Ricky is a fool. Wow. <laughs> Ricky sounds like Smeagol over there. <laughs> Please eat, Ricky. <laughs> so I take it you're using, uh, what is it? Grovel Cower and Beck. Grovel Cower and Beck. Good God, man. Until the, until the end of <laughs> my next turn, um, allies gain advantage on attacks on enemies within 10 feet of me. Winning. <laughs> yes, that's not cool. cool. Nice. I freaking love kobolds. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right, like how you justify Durkus doing that with her personality, I love that. <laughs> is that an action, John? Uh, that is, um, as that is my action, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Are you um, moving or bonusing? <laughs> um, I am not moving, and I don't think I have a healing potion for 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 that. So um, I have one on my person, I believe, still. So you could take it from me. Free flourish. Um. What about the healing potion. I think it'll be our last one. Uh, it is. I still have one too, I thought. I thought you used those. No, the, 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 I think that Wit used a couple last time. Oh, okay. Because on a scale of 1 to 24, okay, I'm down to 9. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, in fact, as long as nobody's worse. Okay. Someone used them on us. Wit would never admit to it, so go ahead. <laughs> See how afraid the feathers are. Well, <laughs> would, would Wit prevent me from taking them off? No. Well, that's a hurter. <laughs> <laughs> There's blood squirting out of it. I'm going to borrow this. Yeah. Sorry. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> feathers everywhere. Uh, I believe we still four. have some singed feathers. Four. Four. So, five. Five. so seven. Seven, seven yeah. Some is better than none. Let's you soak some of that On a again. scale yeah. of one to sixteen, yeah. I'm a four. <laughs> I've, also, I've also got three. But conveniently, yeah. you're next to the healer, so at least there's that. Okay, so that's probably I have lots of... Turn. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> is that Ricky's turn? Oh, oh, no. Oh, you have to leave the poultices, turn. right? Oh, okay. We got the six poultices that'll heal a d6 for an uh, action. Quinn, so, our have uh, elven think so. warlock. I thought oh. you were with us when we found them. Poultices? Yeah. Yes, they're, they're poultices. I think they, we gave them to you. They, yeah. they they take an action and they heal 1d6, so you could like use your action and heal 1d6. Wake eight. up your caster again, basically. Yeah. This might be worth it. Get some solve on my hands and rub it. Basically. Fungal poultices. Or to just smite uh, evil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wake right her up. Right. Wake him up after. Yeah. That's like you're getting a healer, uh. a war cleric. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going to attack the um, tendrils with the um, eldritch blast. Eldritch blast. You get extra damage on your eldritch blast, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Horrible. Horrible. Uh, so it's eight to hit. That misses. Oh, uh, Greg. All right. Your dice hate you this <laughs> adventure. I'm Thank sorry. You. Oh, well. Uh, all right. Is that turn, Quinn? Mm -hmm. Yep. I can oh, cry on okay. my turn. <laughs> you cry if you want to. Leave your tears behind. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you see, I see the Rax, the great fungal god, stepping closer. Ooh, boom, boom. The, the ground vibrates under your feet. We are at the top of round five. Oh, boy. And we are at... We're in uh, danger. We're at, <laughs> we're at Jin, our um, human fighter warlock. Yeah. We so have, we have she two, two is bloody tendrils. Right there with the tendrils. So yeah. she's going to sight up on one of the bloody ones. And with advantage, she's going to draw her rapier. And she's going to swing on it with advantage. While, yeah. So. Uh, we got to rapier the tentacle. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> 16 plus 5, so 21 to hit. 21 hits. For 5. 
five. You destroy that tentacle. And then flipping around offhand, she's going to bring the splinter shard dagger down on the other one with advantage. Okay. I like it. Good ending. I totally didn't just jinx it. Little <laughs> 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 two <laughs> Okay, that's probably enough to get the job done. Uh, yeah, because that's uh, that the No, that's oh, it's thirteen. Oh yeah, that's fine. AC eighteen. That hits. Okay, so then the splinter blade actually AC nineteen, and then that's gonna hit for six. Six. You destroy the other tentacle. Yay! Oh. <laughs> splinter blade. So this. Is, shoot. So this. Is. It's very fitting that the meteor blade. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So this gobble, this uh, gobble, uh, gobble. Co- cobalt drops to his knees. Everybody turns to look at it, and you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> spooky fungus lady. Because you were using the advantage from his right his features. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, that is great. That was clutch. I needed that. I was not rolling poop otherwise. This game. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the meteor beak is destroyed, and the tendrils are destroyed. So there's nothing stopping you from um, closing the portal now, but you have to still close the portal. Okay. Which involves basically pushing the two halves of the okay. meteor together. Okay. Um, so that was Jin? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay, is that is that everything? Is yeah, because that, that was action and bonus action. So let, let's close this and, and, and turn. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wit, a Kenku Sorcerer. I need you to roll a D6 for me. Two, fight back furiously. The character becomes consumed by a sudden burst of rage and attacks the nearest enemy or object with uncontrolled fury. What with advantage. What would, what would that be? What is the nearest enemy or object? Um, either A or B or D. Yeah. If or it's C. A, if, it, if it's a cultist, then go yeah. for it. You could step. You could step into either. Um. I will. Go this way. Move that blood over there. Move your blood over here. Sorry. <laughs> Take sorry. So sorry. <laughs> Take mine with me. And um. Oh, I'm not blood anymore. I'll take my blood back. I know I have advantage on attack rolls, but I'm gonna use my font of magic to gain back a first level spell slot. Okay. Um. And with that, in my fury, I am going to go, Thunder! <laughs> Constitution saving throw. All right, uh, who are you hitting with the Thunder with? Um, it's a 15-foot cu- cube, so, so I should be able three, to hit all three all of those. Yeah. B, C, and D. Free hugs. B, C, and D. B, C, and D. Free C, and D. hugs. You seen it? You con- ECDC. Constitution? Right. That's a very apropos <laughs> yes. spell uh, for D you got a four. Uh, C you got a 15. Mm-hmm. D you got a 6. Okay, so um, C is the only one that passed. Yes. Da, 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 da. 2D8's coming up. Coming up. Okay, not terrible. So 7 Thunder for those that failed. Uh, fail, fail. So B and D um, are blown back and fall to pieces dead. Three Oops. for the one that passed. Um, so C is bloodied by that. Okay. Nice. That's, um, Good that's job on the thunder And wave. he's also <laughs> blown back ten feet. Okay. Nice. Cool, cool. Awesome thunder wave. Uh, one more. Well, it would technically be away from me, so five ten. In a straight, if you go straight line, yeah. right? Nice. So, so, so I'm gonna say that having fulfilled the requirements of the, of the voices in your head, um, if you want to do anything else, like move adjacent to one half of the meteor or something, <laughs> um, if you want to position yourself to try to help close it or something like that, you can do that. Okay. If you have movement left, I don't know what's... what's yeah, what you got I'm, left. I'm assuming any of the thousands of Kakari back here were also like... <laughs> 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 uh, 
Especially uh, with you, Brandon. You see, you see some more starting to climb up from the sides. Yeah. <laughs> what, we need to <laughs> Yeah, I will position myself on one side of the meteor. I'll move past me and go over. I'm assuming that's like right about here-ish. Sure. As long as you're adjacent, I'm not gonna yeah. split hairs about it. Uh, okay. I, don't think, I don't think any of us are a strength build. Yeah, but if this is another one <laughs> of these totals, that's we all three. moved that door before. We had enough to do that, so mm-hmm. hopefully we have enough to do this. Yeah, I'm not like. 60, 16 is not bad. Nothing else needs that. Beats my 10. <laughs> okay, so Beats now my wait. 12. <laughs> so is that Wit's turn? That is Wit's turn. Okay. I've used my action, my bonus action. Beats I've moved. Evil. Okay. So I've listened to the voices in my head. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, another Kakari comes up from the ravine. We're going to say the ravine's over where Sarah is. It's going to come up and, and seeing you moving toward the meteor. It's going to run over there and try to attack you. You think maybe it knows what you're trying to do. <gasps> it's reading my mind. How many points you got left? Four. Four? Four. Well, the natural one. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So... I'm going to, like, put the cudgel on my head or something. <laughs> try and scare them. Uh, let's see. Uh, Quinn, you have an attack. Ooh, a natural 20. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, off cold, but that's I... six slashing damage on you. And I have another response. Right? Yeah. Another hell attribute. Oh yeah. Do you like swear really bad and diabolical when you do this? <laughs> <laughs> so is this a spell slot thing, or is it like a feature you get from something? Let me just make sure. Sometimes you get Hell of and you can only use it once. Oh, yeah. I, it's only what? once. It's only so once. I can't use it. It's not in your spell list with the slots? I only have two slots. So I can use, you, uh, I use two of them up. Okay. okay. So yeah. I All right. just get hurt. So you just get hurt. Uh, let's see. And then... I only have one slot. I held that rebuke for the meteor on purpose. Uh, C is going to run up and attack Riki. Ricky! Uh, AC 12. Myth. Okay, and then one is going to attack Rowan. Uh, AC 9. Miss. <laughs> gonna oh, move. Miss Ping. Okay, uh, so we had uh, an additional Kokari come up there. We had all the bad guys attack. There's no more Meteor Beak or Tendrils, so that is the bad guys. Uh, Rowan, Human War Cleric. I'm going to. You see Push Wit getting a position to try to help push I'm going to go the opposite. Um, <laughs> does it... I mean, are we enough on the opposite side that it already counts, or do we need to be more opposite face? I would imagine we need to be a little more opposite. Probably I'm going to go... I would say one square, uh, on the hmm? one square this way, I would say. Yeah, so I'm going to suck an attack with more opportunity, right? If you do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to go over there. i got a mission to do. Okay. Um, and... Uh, AC7. Okay. AC7 misses. <laughs> okay. And uh, and I'll use an action. Okay, make a strength check for me. Okay. Uh, five plus number, so eight. Eight. It moves a little bit, Ooh. but not that much. Ooh, I think I loosened it. You need some more help. <laughs> <laughs> Can we help each other with the checks on this, or is this something? If, if someone is like standing it? next to him, sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so no words of encouragement working. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ricky could help you, right? Or he could help. Yeah, it would be. Right? Yeah, well Someone funny. give me yeah. a. Can I hear a for the orphans? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that turn roll? Yes. Okay, Ricky, Cobalt Fighter. Okay, Ricky, uh, we'll take one opportunity attack. Opportunity attack. All right. Move over there. Is he eight? Is he eight? will miss. <laughs> and I will use the help action for. Rowan won his next uh, uh, strength on his next attempt to push. The I understand. Awesome. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, Quinn. Uh, for, the, for, the for the orphans. For the orphans. For the orphans. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to take two attacks. Um, there's a way that you could get to that side of the meteor without with only provoking once. Okay. Yeah. So how do I do that? Just go in. Yell for the orphans and run. <laughs> or if you go one, two, three, yeah, that's right. four, you can five. Run around okay. Mm-hmm. So like disengage. Well, if you, if you basically run around that one cultist who's closer to the meteor, if you stay within the base to base of that one. And get up to the meteor on the other side, basically. Yeah. Okay. 
So you take one attack? Yep. Uh, AC 9. That will nice. Miss. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can still try to push. Uh, Mega strength check. Alright, I'm hoping I do something. <laughs> Why do your dice hate you? <laughs> That's uh. Maybe five. it's Sage's dice. Minus five. One. So four. <laughs> four. He rolls so. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna oh, like stop playing budget. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, let's see, where were we? That was me last cool. adventure. I do have a fetish. Uh, so, top of round six. <laughs> My sealer axe gets closer. Boom, boom. boom. Footsteps. Uh, we and can do it. It is on to Jin, our fighter, our human fighter. Warlock. All right, so Jin moves through in between these. And says, come on, Wit, and helps Wit. Because Wit's strength is much better to hers. <laughs> okay. Cool, cool. Um, Wit, roll a d6. Which is funny. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping the beak was gone. Maybe the voices were gone. Yeah, that's you got it. Oh. <laughs> that is a four. Four. Incoherent rambling. Oh, the character damn. begins babbling incoherently. Still not different. <laughs> uh, speak- this was so perfect that this happened to the freaking Kenku. <laughs> uh, the character begins babbling incoherently or speaking nonsensically and making it difficult for others to understand them or communicate effectively. Uh, and you can make a strength check with advantage. advantage. Uh, with advantage because you're getting help from uh, Jim. <laughs> I start speaking in bird. <laughs> in bird. <laughs> All right. That's an a plus one. No. Uh, is it athletics? Oh, it doesn't yes. make a difference. Yeah. Twelve. 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 It moves a little bit. <laughs> We're so far. Anything else? Um. <laughs> oh, my God. Um. So there's, uh, there's three of the characters on that one side of the new year, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And there's two on the other side, right? right. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm sorry, I finished doing whatever. I think that is it. You think that is it? Okay. What terrible right. thing are you going to do to us? God. Um, so the entire party is around the new year at this point, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. And it is the bad guy's turn. So uh, your combined total strength mm-hmm. is enough to push the sides of the meteors together. <laughs> so as long as you're all as long as you're all adjacent to it. As if we had to do checks for done. <laughs> um, so 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 more of the Kakari um, are, are coming rushing up. Oh no. And um, as they as they come up like all of you together push with your combined strength and you snap the meteor shut. Okay. Um, so, like an Easter egg? Kind of, <laughs> yeah. An Easter egg. It was worth uh, it. So you, so the you close in. the meteor, and... Chocolate? I need to read something to you. <laughs> okay. uh, if I can find it among all my stuff here. Come on, come on. Uh, okay. Successfully closing the portal. Here we go. All right. So, the meteor snaps shut with a thunderclap, the portal dissolving into a fine iridescent mist. <laughs> All about you wriggle sever, uh, severed, oh, se- severed tendrils, although they were already kind of destroyed and burned. Uh, a thick spore cloud hangs in the air. The Kakari, moving almost with one mind, scatter into the hills, desperate to escape. My sealer axe pauses, towering in the sky. Yellow ichor oozes from its body and splashes onto the ground, each drop the size of a fist. Great lidless black eyes stare into you and you stand helpless, rooted to the spot. You feel as though you are falling. 
Your mind stretches. Your vision narrows to a pinprick, a tunnel through which you can only see the great mushroom and your mind threatens to break. You blink and my Celerax has already lumbered away, its heavy strides pulsing through your feet. As it vanishes behind the black mountain, you can't help but wonder what other horrors there might be in this world lurking just beyond the borders of rational life. <laughs> Did we win? <laughs> yes, you yeah. won. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Jin and uh, Rowan really won. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are we doing about his infection? <laughs> uh, well, hold on. So, so there's still one member of the part of, of the expedition unaccounted for. That's right. Oh. We're still missing uh, Amos. Amos Chalmers. Oh, we found this person. We found belongings. Professor Kerwin. Yes. She's up there with Professor Davenport, but we're missing. Yes, Chalmers is the only Amos one. That, Chalmers. Is the only one that you haven't found. All right, well, let's go look. Amos? Well, we Amos Chalmers? Amos? Um, so are you heading back into the cave system? Um, are there I mean, any other exits other than the cave system? Because I thought we explored that pretty well. The only place you haven't explored is the um, <coughs> is is the tunnels that were choked with, with, with the mycelium. Oh. I guess we should go. Mm-hmm. That's the only place you haven't explored yet. All right. Um, <laughs> Professor Davenport, uh, Professor Kerwin, do you want to try... We I don't know if there are other people. Well, we want to short rest. Or what do we want to do? I think we've deserved, we've earned it. <laughs> We're all pretty tired. I mean, do we get a sense of <laughs> are the caves starting to collapse? Is there something that would drive urgency? There's, th- there's no urgency right now. No. Okay, so let's. let's it, it, was, it was not a. Let's, um, let's it was not a load bearing villain. Let's take. Let's take a breather. <laughs> 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 all right. Let's take a breather. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Load bearing right, so Solve anyone? Do I get my mind back? <laughs> uh, yes, the psychic mutterings stop. Oh. With, the oh. of the oh. With the closing of the portal. Yep. yep. Whatever. Just happened. I ruffle up my feathers and take a big old shake. Clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can roll hit dice. You you successfully take a short rest. There's, there's, no, good. there's really, there's really no threat at the moment. Dice, right? We haven't short rested before, have mm-hmm. we? I don't know if I used uh, hit dice. I think see. we've short rested once. Oh, we, we long rested, yeah. so we're good. So as far as doing hit dice, okay. Yes, correct. Yeah. Oh, we did long rest. Okay, the student reset. Uh, I mean, you guys had a long yeah. rest inside. Where are your dice at? Inside the alcove. Is it? Greg, is this D ten yours? Yes, it probably. All right, all right. So go ahead and roll hit dice, and uh, Kyle, you can use your poultices if you want to use them up. Yeah, I'm gonna see how the short rest works first. And okay. See. Sure, sure. Okay. Took the short rest. <laughs> So the party just took a short rest, uh, and you're going back in the caves to look for uh, Amos Chalmers, is that right? Yes. Yes, I guess so. Okay. The only I place, suppose so. The only place you haven't explored is the uh, the mycelium-choked uh, passage. Yeah. Which is well, back it's through upstairs, the sun. Upstairs, right? Well, have... It was back through the sun-dappled cave where we met the old guy and missing we... his boots. And we have um, a bird with um, sacred flame, or whatever, not sacred flame. Firebolt. Guiding bolt. Yeah, yeah, there's there there's the passage in the hallway yeah. where uh, Wit burned basically sure. the whole the whole um, wall down, right. and then there's the there's the northwestern passage. I mean, going either way. I mean, what are you doing? Where are you going? What are you doing? How are you approaching this? You, you tell me what you're doing. How would you like to proceed? It's hard for me to visualize because I I've still don't have a map. Like I've got nothing. I really don't. There there's there is. Um, a passage in the caves that is choked with this mycelium. Right. Yeah. There are two ways to go in it. Okay, from where? Um, there is a southern passage and there is uh, like a, a more like northeastern passage. Wh- whichever one is closer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going to the southern one if I recall correctly, right? I, with are you just, torches lit to try and burn away the fungus that's around the edge. Uh, uh, okay, so using torches to burn Jin away the might, fungus. Yeah, okay. ask, Why are you using her? torches? I can just... Somebody the have hand? a pole? Yeah, yeah. sure. Sure. Somebody have like a long pole to make sure there's no like fireball, fireball, fireball. Jin, Jin asks uh, the children, "Is is this puddles of digestive of acid to, that people have fell in? Is this hallway going be to like squeeze us the time same place. way?" Uh, the <laughs> the armor says, "Don't don't know." All right, well let's approach it with fire and hope that does the job. Okay, so see. what were you saying? What were you saying, Kyle? We should we should probably probe the floor so someone doesn't fall into. The, a puddle of digestive acid. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's strategy. Do we have any kind of well, long yes. like pole or 
Biki uh, forgot his ten foot pole. Well, hold on a second. So as you, as you start using the torch and the firebolt, mm-hmm. um, basically the whole entire tunnel ignites and starts to burn. Okay. Oh um, dear. So so basically like you sort of sit there with like this giant fire ball like in front of you as it slowly burns <laughs> oh down. Man. I hope there's not somebody alive in Ricky hopes there's not somebody alive in there. Uh, oh, it, it, it slowly starts to burn down Mark, through fire the, the hole. The tunnel, Mark, so. Fire the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Are you taking damage? Uh, so after maybe like like maybe 20 minutes or so like the entire passageway is all burned and it's all cleared. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, with so, healing in hand should we need it let's hurry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you start to move through there and you find um the bodies of a couple of spider-like creatures Ooh. that are all burned up. <laughs> all right. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, You're welcome. So, <laughs> where is my... You're welcome. I need my uh, You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, nope. <laughs> so you get, you get all the way to the end of this passage and... Um, you do find that there's one turnoff where there's a hole in the floor where Dr. Um, excuse me, Professor Davenport um, and his group um, had, had gone through there mm-hmm. and he had jumped down to the lake, so you okay. find that. And then you also find uh, an alcove at the very end where um, you find uh, Amos, the, you find the body oh. of Amos Chalmers. Spider wrapped. Um, uh, he appears to be burnt. <laughs> Oh, no! <laughs> it appears to be burned up. Like um, recently burnt? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no! Can Mickey we was heal him? They tried to cook him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think he oh, no. might be on saving that way at this point. Oh, yeah. I, just, I run up and check him, see if I can yeah, put, it hasn't like, been that long, slather right? salt solves yeah, all over Yeah, that's his fellow party member. Um, so... Um, it actually says that Amos Chalmers was second to Hester Derby as far as the the, the ranking of the guard that went oh, with the group. No. So Hester Derby was, was the leader, and then Amos Chalmers was second oh. in charge. So we're going to say Rowan was third in charge. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, there, it, it looks like there was maybe some sort of like a web-like covering on him. Like, like, oh, like, like his, his body, one? his body is lying on the floor, okay. and it, it's burnt from the fire. But there's also like, like webbing, like, like, the, like the residue mm-hmm. of webbing around him. So you think maybe he was webbed to the floor? Yeah, you could try some healing, and, and just in case he's not too far beyond the veil. I check him to see if he's like, yeah, if he's like any minute, signs right? of life. Is he ran down there? Dead, dead, or just mostly <laughs> dead? <laughs> Or is he completely dead? Has he failed three death saves, even One, though he's two, an three, NPC? Four, this is in the line. <laughs> chest compressions, chest compressions, <laughs> chest compressions. Would not be the first time we've ruled that an NPC could be brought back if we were fast enough. So it says, so it says here, uh, in quotes, clever, in quotes, uh, players may wish to set the entire area on fire. <laughs> Doing so will vanquish the spore weavers. Those are the spider things. Um, uh, and their spider things, but will also kill Amos Chalmers. Who lies unconscious beyond the secret door to the north? Oh, well, he did. He did. Um, so, yeah, so, but we're so, clever. <laughs> uh, he called wit you, you would have otherwise found his body covered in webs with all these little spiderlings all over it, mm-hmm. like, like he was going to be food for the spore weavers. Um, well. But you burned him up. <laughs> oh, it, looked like, it looked like fungus webbing, not <laughs> webbing webbing, right? You know, we didn't think that. You haven't searched this way. He's probably that way. Let's. Burn it. He <laughs> <laughs> thinks he was like this when we got here. I, 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 the spiders obviously tried to cook him. Yeah. <laughs> I had forgotten about the fire thing when Sarah said that it was burning down that passageway. And if I had thought of it, I would have said, okay, so the whole thing ignites, and I would have just had you find him at that point, but I totally oh, forgot about no. the fire part. Oh, oh, <laughs> and I didn't, and I was like, they're probably going to go back down there and burn it again. Yeah. And the guy's going to die. <laughs> But I just I waited to see what you did, <laughs> and, and you said fire, and you said fire. <laughs> so all right, fire. Eh, we get paid. This, Ricky thinks we get paid the same either way. <laughs> the book it. may say that wit's clever, but wit is not so clever. <laughs> I think I get paid more now. We're bringing the crispy body with us, so technically, there's you know uh, crispy bacon. <laughs> crispy bacon. I actually had a note here that says this may be Kyle's character, but that didn't wind up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were coming in the next session, so I, I was going to say that that was going to be your body there. Got it. All webbed up. 
<laughs> the power just sort of barges you down. You realize that we were on the cusp of burning it anyway. <laughs> Uh, Instead of a mushroom, I just have horrible burn scars. <laughs> you find him at the edge of fire. <laughs> okay, so that was the only that was the only person that you that you did not that you hadn't found, and uh, and, and now you've basically covered the entire list okay. of all the people there. So let me. Did the other two uh, um, professors come with us, or had they stayed outside? Um, I'm Professor Davenport. Probably wouldn't want to climb back down, but he probably wouldn't feel safe either. So with him and Professor Kerwin, they would probably follow behind you oh, no. to come back down here. <laughs> oh, um, I wouldn't let them see the body. No. No. Oh, the spider two bad things. Don't you don't want to come down this way. <laughs> okay, so so you've explored the entire tunnel system. You've basically beaten the adventure. Um, are you heading back to meet uh, Professor Barnabas Ward? Um, Let's go get to the ladies yeah, in the cave so first. Yeah, so see if we can find temples. We got to get the ladies back out of the uh, uh, spot where we found him. Yep. Yes, yes. yes you go back and you get the, you get the survivors uh, yeah. behind the barricade. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, How many survived? Not very um, many. <laughs> one, two, okay. three, so, uh, four, you, you, five. five. Not very many. Uh, so, so you, including you, yeah, five mm. includes you. <laughs> so you travel, you travel back um, to the hamlet of Donshire with all of the survivors. Professor Ward is uh, delighted to be reunited with the. Would you say five? Yep. With the five survivors of the expedition, and he mourns the loss of those who died. Uh, mm. He rewards you with the promised five hundred gold pieces. He also gives you a rare smile, a hearty thank you, and a clap on the back. Shortly after, you begin to hear a noise as if someone is in great pain. You turn and see Rowan grunting and sweating. Uh The lines lines of fungal infection have grown up his neck and cover his entire face. You hear horrible ripping ripping and tearing sounds. Suddenly his face and skull split in the middle and tentacles with eyes on the ends. Long rows of teeth um, on them erupt from the opening in his, the opening in his skull. For the offense. The <laughs> creature lets out a roar, and that is the end of the adventure. Oh. 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 It's so close! Oh. We're going to take the 500 gold to a temple to restore yeah. you. <laughs> you turn into a monster. Bring the crowd to the orphans! <laughs> <laughs> He turned oh. into a monster in the end. Oh, no. <laughs> Wit, Wit takes the crown off his body and goes about their way. I'm pretty, I'm pretty. Pop, my parents My parents abandoned me. <laughs> Oh, this guy over here is all destroyed and not even human anymore. I was like, oh man, I can make a really cool horror movie ending with Roa turning into a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I had a shocked and surprised expression on my face when he was saying that. Yeah. Me, me too. I'm worried you're going to do something bad to Jin as well. <laughs> well, I was about to say if he claps him on yeah. the back, that's not good. <laughs> that's what triggered it. <laughs> Well, we did not check in and see if it was uh, growing or whatever during our fight and stuff. I thought so, he was going to make uh, us fight you. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'd like to do Stars and Wishes, and uh, if people want to, I, I want to discuss a little more about the adventure as well. Um, okay. Would you all prefer to do, like, to learn some some behind-the-scenes info about the adventure first and then do Stars and Wishes? Do you want to do Stars and Wishes first and then talk more about the adventure? Let's do behind-the-scenes first because it might shape Stars and Wishes. Uh, okay, we, we can do that. Um, so, um, just off the top of my head, things that I remember from um, from the adventure was that uh, in the final fight, when when Jin ran over toward the meteor, and I said that the tendrils became more visible, mm-hmm. it was because you had the mushroom on you. The, I said you had a mushroom stu- stuck on your the, armor. The glowing armor. No, you had you had a mushroom from yeah. the bioluminescent mushroom yeah. that we found. I had like 20 of them, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you had them stuck on your armor. Yeah. So so the thing with the tendrils was that there was a 50% mischance on the tendrils. Mm-hmm. If you made an attack roll on it and you hit it, there was a 50% mischance because they were invisible. And Oof. the um, throwing the powder reduced the chance by 10. So when you got there, you saw the Kakari Shaman 
throw, do one throw, mm -hmm. which I'm a little confused by. Because why would the Kakari Shaman want to make the tundra more real? Summon them, make so them more real for them. Open it, yeah. right? See maybe the god. To be maybe fully in the world to open maybe, it. Right? Maybe, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. Like I said, Ricky, I was actually a little concerned about mm -hmm. that. As why are we doing this thing yeah. that the enemies were doing? Right. <laughs> so, so the shaman throws the first powder, which brings the mischance to forty. Okay. And then uh, Kyle, as Rowan, threw some powder and brought it down to 30. Okay. And then Ricky attacked mm -hmm. um, and hit. And then there was a 30% mischance. So I said, one, two, three on a D10, you'll miss. And I rolled a three. Mm -hmm. So you missed. And then the bioluminescent um, mushrooms, if they get close enough, they reduce the chance by 20%. Oh. And if you look through the meteor, uh, sorry, through the, through the splinter blade uh, the piece of the meteor, like I told you, you can see everything just fine. And there's no mischance. Right. So that was the whole thing with the powder and, yeah. and the mushrooms was there's, the mischance. And in that situation, would my blind fighting also have negated that? Because she could see all invisible things within 10 feet anyway? Um, Possibly. If you had brought it up to me at the time, I might have said okay. sure. Yeah. I meant, well, I mean, I, I attuned to yeah. the dagger. It's not like I no, no, pass fine. it to someone else. So, yeah, no, it's fine. It's, yeah, yeah. So, so that, that was the deal with the powder. Okay. Uh, let me scan. Does anybody have any questions? Questions while I kind of look here um, about anything in particular. What was I? I was thinking. Of uh, so, so, like, if the whole party had worn the mushrooms, if they got close enough to attack, they would have been able to see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I actually was, I was, I was asking myself. I was like, did, didn't we take a mushroom too? But I wasn't Which sure. Did I did, but I think I threw it in the lake. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's Just right. Wit. That's right. <laughs> All right. So, so area A was the camp, which Kyle wasn't there for. Okay. Um, the the mounds that had the two bodies in it that you found yeah like you guys were about to leave that area and not discover the bodies yeah i mean it just seemed like they were monuments it didn't seem like they were burial markers the way that it was initially described so yeah um so um i, I had i think it was greg I, I had greg he had the highest passive perception i said that you saw something that looked different at the base of the mound so i tried to i kind of fed you guys that one i'm like i don't want you to leave the bodies behind so I said, hey, Greg, you see something in that in that mound? And then you found the boot and belonged to a person's body, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the psychic mutterings, which wit got, hmm. it said basically the person with the lowest wisdom um, has to make a, a saving throw, I believe. Uh, when the group enters the camp, the character with the lowest wisdom, lowest wisdom begins to hear uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think there was a saving throw in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there was. And and you failed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you and Kate actually had had the lowest wisdom. I think we tied. Yeah, we tied. Uh, but but I just you, I just picked you. Yeah. I didn't want to have two people <laughs> having to deal with the mutterings. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's what that was. It was appropriate though. It was. I, I think. Yeah, I think it would have been nice to specify the actual combat. Uh, Effects on on uh, what was going on with those mutterings. I mean, as, as far as far as like Jeff writing the adventure, yes. Like like, what do these things have to do with with combat? Did it really right. affect yeah. combat? Yeah, I got you. But the role play thing something. was cool. But like, yeah. what? How would that have like you know negative one or positive? Especially one, since or... it didn't seem to start happening. To I mean, the or was it anymore. just for role okay. play flavor? In which yeah. case, to talk about the perfect. Role so that's play kind of a, that's, that. that's, that. that's <laughs> kind of a wish for Jeff. Yeah, yeah. which mm -hmm. it didn't really do anything to your. Playing, it like didn't negative. really affect my turns. No. It was no. more of a role play flavor for me personally. Right, which is fun and everything. That's honestly, yeah, the, no, there, there was so much going on in that fight that trying to add more effects True. and modifications would have been a it, lot. Yeah. It definitely would have yeah. made the fight a lot more difficult since mm -hmm. I was the yeah. one with all the magical AoEs. We had a yeah. very uniquely unbalanced. <laughs> so there was there was the camp, there was the tents, there was the burial mounds, there was the cops of trees. I mean, you guys really didn't miss whole lot in those areas um, uh, the crater you never explored the crater which was where the meteor fell and that's where you would have fought some Kakari who were basically hanging out where the meteor had, had fallen and opened up the crack that led to the cave system below um, those so, are the ones we saw from the bog right correct you guys went in through the river pathway yeah. and um, uh, a, a lot of there was some stuff in here like where's the river pathway here it is right here so, um, falling into the river, that was, we did that pretty much the way it was supposed to. <laughs> right. um, with, with, with the athletics check and the, and the 2d4 bludgeoning damage, if you failed, or half as much if you succeeded. Uh, the secret alcove. Um, doo -doo -doo. Earthen, earthenware pot. I'm trying to see if there was something that, that you guys wouldn't have known here. Oh, it's very clutch that we picked up that, the powder in both places. <clears throat> Uh, the secret alcove. The shortwater underwater tunnel leads to a small Should chamber. Mm -hmm. 
and <laughs> win. <laughs> um, okay. When, there were some things that basically described like if characters make a make an active perception check, they could possibly find this. Mm-hmm. And I basically decided not to do that. And I said, whoever has the highest passive perception, I'm going to give you the information. So I kind of was. I've talked with Jeff on Discord repeatedly through this whole process, and um, you know, uh, he said something about the fact that you know, I think he said he was he was a little more into the idea that sometimes people just miss things, and he was fine with that. Mm-hmm. And I was like. I don't really like that. <laughs> so whenever well, that's just a matter of style. It is. It yeah. is. I'm, I'm not saying anything bad about Jeff or his style, but but I I chose to give you guys information when you weren't making active checks. I was just like, yeah. who has the highest perception? You get the information. That that's what I did in, in most cases. Yeah. Um, so falling into the river, yep. Uh, the pathway. Um, uh, perceptive characters with a passive wisdom perception of twelve or higher see a faint glow coming from under the rapids so greg your passive perception was actually 13 so you actually had the passive perception to see where the alcove was mm-hmm. where the cudgel was yeah. um, and uh sarah you could have now that i'm thinking of this you you could have used the cudgel to command the meteor beak to obey you hmm. oh, wow what? i'm not sure how i would give that to you yeah. <laughs> as a dm right Ma- yeah. maybe a you know uh, some feedback for jeff I wasn't sure, but when you said that you held it up and you tried to speak in the Kakari language, mm-hmm. I said, okay, so the media beak reacts very badly. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I'm like, that's about the only thing I can mm. think of to tell you. Yeah, I mean, if um, I had thought to ask the, the armor, right, maybe the Whispering Children could have told us, but I was trying not to abuse maybe. that too. And, and I could have I, I, I just said to you, <laughs> Sarah, you can use the cudgel yeah. to command the media beak to stop screeching. I could have just said that. Yeah. But I felt like I was... I don't think Wit would have been smart enough to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, like, even if Wit, like, I, I only have an intelligence something. score of eight. Yeah, <laughs> I got you. Yeah. Does the head of the cudgel look exactly like the beak coming out of the meteor? No idea. That I'm, I'm okay. not sure. Just, that would have been I mean, probably well, we a good, it, like, there was a mural clue. of a Krakari holding it up against the fungus no, thing. Maybe, maybe it's something well, like, oh, yeah. the, maybe the that's Krakari something was holding up against a beaked monstrosity. Oh, okay. The monstrosity was clearly scared of it. and That's how we knew we had to send people... Across yeah. the river again or to get the cudgel anyway. Or if it was, mm-hmm. a, if it was yeah. uh, something that you saw more as like a weapon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like. I was like again. Like I, I try to give information a lot of the time, even if people don't actively search for it. Yeah. But I just thought it was a little bit too cheesy to be like, "Hey, you can tell it to stop screeching with the cudgel." Right. I was hoping you would figure it out, and I thought that when you would ran, ran down there, you might try it again. Yeah. Um, um, so I, I mean, but again, there was I so got much. Kind of caught up in the whole. No, idea I, I get of, it. Like, I get it. I, he also went a little nutty. He did. <laughs> it was very apropos that that's what you were going to do anyway, and Honestly, then you no, had I even more fight, reasons. I, say, I think the fight went pretty well, uh, even without any kind of additional shenanigans to sure. actually make it easier. Yeah, I mean, I thought the fight was very I, tense. You guys were like almost yeah. almost being knocked unconscious, and everything. it was very swingy. If we had rolled tonight, like we rolled last week, I think we mm-hmm. would have. It could have gone differently. I do. Oh, yeah. I, really, I, I, I mean, yeah. when I got hit with that screech, my armor class went down to ten. Yeah. Oh, that's low. Yeah. yeah. And she's our only It was master. a very good thing that we closed it out as fast yeah. as we did, because I would have been very, very vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, was that something actually a part of the module, that What's if we're that? all there, we're, we can use our combined strength to close it, or...? Um, I, I used combined strength for a couple of things in this. The door. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. that, and that is not part of the adventure at all. Right. Okay. But I, I added that in there. Valid strategy. And taking it, that was a DM flavor to make up for the fact that we had a very unbalanced party. party. <laughs> Basically, I, I, I was somewhat trying to compensate for like no big frontline fighter, no healer up until Kyle. Um, I was trying to compensate a little bit for that. Jeff did say that you guys would probably get TPK'd without a big fighter and a healer. Yeah. Um, Kyle may or may not have been told what class to play to come into this. I usually play Warcraft. You do anyway? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I figured it's my, that it's it's my go to. It's my go to. It's my so default. Like, okay. Isn't that what you played in Doom Annihilation yeah. too when you came in? Yeah, yeah. I, I played Theric, yeah, yeah. 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 So like cool. it's my like default. Well, that's convenient because we don't always favor it, no, so that no. worked out well. So you guys went into the caves. I mean, the. the us for myself. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I paid the price. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, underground river, the, the devouring bog. Uh, if the character point. steps foot in the devouring bog, it, imme- it immediately yanks them into the roots into its center, <laughs> and they start to Wait. suffocate. DC 15 strength check to try to get out. Uh, um, the yeah. Kakari above throw rocks. Yeah, I did all that, um, destroying the bog. Um, you can do so by by hacking it apart. But I just uh, once Without you guys get fire. out, I let you use fire. 
That's well, fine. I mean, I blew a hole in it with a fireball. <laughs> <laughs> with a uh, for kill it with fire. No, it was burning hands. Wasn't it? it was yeah. burning hands. Yeah. yeah, I was like, "What panics?" And just cast burning hands up to the sky. <laughs> uh, the whisper of my ceiling of armor, where you got that in the yeah, quarter. Yeah, screwed am I? And, um, well, th- there's a, there's a bunch of stuff that says that basically because Jeff intended this to be dropped into a campaign. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. So so there's a whole bunch of stuff that basically says what happens, um, which I can tell you because I'm. I don't know if we're going I don't to think we're going to play in this world again. If you want to keep it because secrets, that's fine. But otherwise, I am curious. Uh, it basically talks about how it wants to spread. Okay. And it doesn't want to spread to any of the party members because you're too powerful. Okay. So it's so uh, I, I think it was a mechanic where you had to make saving throws every so often. Okay. And then you had to basically try to go over and approach like commoners, basically, uh-huh. okay. and try to talk to them or touch them. And, and, and some of it would come off of you and go onto them. Uh-huh. And, and it would keep spreading from person to person to person. That's kind of... <laughs> I mean, given she's a warlock and what her patron is, uh, that is actually synergistic. So... <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, if the character succeeds in their save, but, but, but you failed... Um, it said you could have... I think it said you could have given up the saving throw voluntarily if you wanted to. Um, bypassing the curtain. Poor um, hygiene. Uh, you could try destroying the curtain. Uh, you could try to role play through the curtain. You could try various magical means. Um, if the characters attack the curtain, it begs for mercy, which is what I did when John said he was going to burn it. Mm. When Ricky said he was going to burn no it. No burn, no burn. Uh, and, and, and the pigeon the pigeon that Greg pulled out with uh, Mage Hand uh, was from the survivors of the barricade where Rowan was. They tried to send a pigeon for help. They did. Pigeon, yeah. Um, Whisper of Mycelium Armor. Yep, got that, got that. And then there, there, there's a list of truth and lies that I was telling as you guys were role-playing with the curtain. Uh-huh. I was reading from the list of truths and lies that it was telling. Uh-huh. So some of the things it was saying were true and some of them were not. Yeah, uh-huh. like healing. <laughs> yeah. Like like truths are the fungus in the tunnel ahead conceals hidden dangers. I said that one. Yeah. Um, the resting place of the car, of a Kakari shaman in the underwater tunnel, which you found. Um the tip of the fungal bridge is weak and brittle, the one that led to the survivors. Uh, our prey has vanished. I used that one. The meteor uh, is a portal to another world. That, that's a truth. That I didn't do it. And then and the nest of the spore weavers is lousy with traps. <laughs> and then the lies were people come to kill us. Um, eating a piece of the curtain grants eternal youth. <laughs> I didn't use that one. <laughs> the, uh, the Kakari walk through walls. That's not true. The Mycelorax is a god and wishes to save the world. That's not true. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think we knew that. <laughs> all that came into the caves are dead or have escaped. There's nothing left to find here, which is a lie. Um, there's a monster in the caves that can only be defeated with the power of positive thought. Uh, wow. <laughs> I love that one. You can play that one ways depending on the particular party that you're working with. That's cool. Um, the fungal bridge had some weird mechanics on it. Like, like when I was going through this adventure, I was copying and pasting it into a Google Doc that I was customizing myself. Yeah. And I was... I was highlighting big areas of text and deleting them because um, I didn't want to include them in the adventure. Uh, and one of the things was the fungal bridge had something where like if so many pounds of, of weight got on the fungal bridge, it would just collapse. And then you would be, um, you would be basically, and there hit it. Yeah, I couldn't tell how high up he was on the bus. Enough, oh, he's, was, all, he's yeah. all right. He's just on the We're bus. looking at my son, Sebastian, on the monitor. Okay. Um, so, so if so much weight got on the fungal bridge, it would have collapsed. And then you would have had to make those checks again that took you 18 minutes to get yeah. through and I'm like forget that I just deleted that completely um, and then Sarah used Thunder Wave and blew away the bridge anyway <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like alright oh, <laughs> uh, just went doing wit things <laughs> uh, the, the survivors um, Rowan was supposed to be curled up in a ball in the corner like kind of crazy and muttering about the end of times <laughs> that's it that's what he was supposed to be doing but I'm like nope that's gonna be Kyle <laughs> I expended that rule you did you did in the next uh, <laughs> and then you I have a note here leave the identity of the figure vague for Kyle's character <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see um, if you had engaged uh, Professor Redgrave on the topic she would have talked to you for hours about fungus yeah. <laughs> that was something out there would have run out of time. Yeah. Would have ended. Um, we, she gave the meteoric splinter blade. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we went over the spore weaver nest that you just killed Ambush Chalmers. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you guys had gone in there and gone to down the hole, that would have been you would have come up at the at the at the underground lake. Um, the constricting tunnel. Uh, I totally screwed the pooch on that one. I totally messed that one up a lot. Um, it was only supposed to be one 
one Michael loom per square, not two like what I did. But there was no rules for being able to squeeze past them, which I added. Because mm. I was like, I was like, e even with one, with one Michael loom in one space, and having them stack up, I'm like, how are you ever going to get through all those? <laughs> So I started to squish them into one space together and say, okay, well, you can use the, the optional tumble rules to try to move past them. So I, 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 they weren't supposed to be in the same space together and there was no tumbling rules. Those were all Chris either adding or messing things up or mm -hmm. both. <laughs> but still, that, that still came out very well though. It, it I, very, I thought it was great. And when I talked it was still to, an intense fight. Yeah, oh, yeah. When, when I talked to Jeff about it, he said that like, he said something about a strategy where everybody would be focusing in one direction on all their attacks and then try and basically, you know, kill one in the front and then somebody move. Kill one in the front and then somebody move. And something along those lines, I think he might have said something about suggesting people like ready actions or something. Like like once the person in front of me gets killed, then I'm going to move into the space as a ready to action or something like that. Oh. Um, uh, we have a Sebastian at the table. Sebastian. Um, who just turned to one. Hi, Sebastian. We love you, buddy. Um, so... Uh, the constricting tunnel, like once it closed on round six, you would have to make strength checks to get out of the constricting tunnel, and it was the same thing as the river, the DC 15 strength athletics check. Oof. And I was like, I really don't want you guys to get caught in there, and you would be taking a D8 of damage every round while you were trapped inside there. Yeah, we would not survive. Just let it, light it on fire. That's all. And you guys would not have survived. It was constricting, not like mold. Yeah, I mean, it, it was the same time a thick type of thing as the one we set on fire that killed the no, professor. Oh, no, it was different. Got it. It was different. <laughs> it, um, think yeah. of a big intestine. No, I did. That's what I did. That's what I did think. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is an intestine with these like worm fungus things popping out of it. Yeah. So, so at the start of round two of combat, the fungus that coats everything starts to constrict. Um, each round after the first, another microloom pops out. Uh, when the tunnel completely closes on round six, you take a D8 every turn uh, of damage. Um, oh, sorry, a D8 bludgeoning on their first round trap and D4 bludgeoning for each additional round. Okay. Um, and it, it, it reopens after 10 minutes. Um, DC 15 strength check to try to move through at 25% of your speed. And I'm like, ooh. So trying to move through it has that same DC of 20, uh, 15 strength check and you're moving at a quarter speed. I, I wasn't a big fan of that. So but, done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then that pitfall at the end where, where Ricky fell in was supposed to be part of the encounter. Hmm. Oh, were there ways for whatever happened to Rowan's character with the for the characters to get hit by the Kakari or something and like become those b creatures with the head splitting things like I ended uh, up as? Uh, was there a yes. cure? Uh, well, I think well, let's see. We knew that if we had failed certain saves, we cut off your arm. So the cut off my, oh. <laughs> so you essentially became what I think is called a skitter bloom. Um, and those tentacles, nice. the tentacles that they had on their faces, um, they were plus four to hit, uh, a D8 plus two damage, uh, and a DC 14 con save. Um, mm -hmm. And on a failure, inflicts disadvantage on the target's next attack made before the end of their next turn. If the creature fails to save at least once, they must make a DC 12 constitution saving throw 24 hours later. On a failure, they are infected. Uh, unless healed by lesser restoration or a similar effect, the character will become a devoted fungal servant of Mycelorax, as Kyle just did. Um, within a week, it mm -hmm. says. Uh, the DM's discretion, this may mean death or various and horrifying physical transformations. Torm's not going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you died before you surrendered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Never give up, um, never surrender. Orphans aren't going to like that. No. <clears throat> The orphans are in fact orphans. So the entrance hall, I think, was pretty... We, okay. you, you pretty much found everything in the entrance hall. Uh, the murals, that was all pretty straightforward. Um, the deep caves, the makeshift camp, you found all that. Anything fancy about the lake? Uh, the subterranean lake, let's see. Subterranean lake. Black veil. Uh, oh, the, the white stalactites that were mentioned in the flavor text as I, as I described the room. Um... You could have taken those. Um, and the, the fungal entities won't enter this place because, because of the salt. Um, this may provide a respite for the characters. Um, they, they may be used in combat. Treat, treat these stalactites as an improvised ranged attack um, uh, with a range of five feet. I, uh, I think that may be his melee attack. Um, 
I'm not sure, but it said, uh, if you throw a handful of salt upon a fungal entity, it takes a D6 fire damage on a hit. And the target much, must make a DC 12 con save or be stunned until the end of its next turn. Mm. Uh, assault stalactite assault stalactite may be fashioned into a dagger, which has the same effect, essentially. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Salty dagger. <laughs> um, you could have said the name of the statues to make them collapse. You could have retreated from the tunnel. They wouldn't have followed you. Um, let's see. I think you got everything else. The bottom of the lake. You found the veil that Greg was wearing. Okay. Uh, so the coins were a red herring. Yeah. Yes, correct. Um, as, five, uh, yeah. as far as the adventure itself, the only... Wait, wait hold on. Oh. Hold on. Um, if Wade had failed the constitution saves in the lake... You would have lost a point of strength. Ah. Ooh. Every time you failed, you would have lost a point of strength. That's possible. Yep. Um, and there was something about how every time you do a dive, there's a 25% chan- chance of retrieving the treasure. I threw that out. I'm like, once you make the check, you just find it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's something oh, else that's... that we would have just been belabored for an It would have taken a long time. It's a party dynamic, right? Yeah. Yeah. A party that really just wants to kick the poop out of themselves. And... Uh, any character yeah. swimming in the lake becomes covered in bioluminescent algae, dyeing their skin neon green and causing them to glow as bright as a candle lit. Yeah. Nice. Um, uh, bathing in fresh water removes the effect. So eventually you would have just cut it. <laughs> never, or, or just never bathe. I just never bathe. I mean, when? Oh. Might not. What would have happened if we failed the final encounter? Uh, I think he's hold on. There. Hold yeah, on. Um, <laughs> uh, the, gra- the, the veil, the grotto, that was all pretty straightforward. Um, there, there was a big section that Jeff actually set in the adventure where you guys found the makeshift camp that was near the underground lake. Um, and then I said, the, said there was a passage where you found Hester Derby's body. There was some kind of a, like, making checks kind of a thing to get from there to where you found Professor Davenport and it said something like if this seems like it would basically be not not fun to not not include it so I didn't include it <laughs> um, there was a whole bunch of checks that hadn't even made to go through there I don't know what they were again I deleted it from my copy of the adventure and I said you just go from there and then you just find Professor Davenport that's it easy peasy um, uh, let's see there was, a, there was a, a check to climb up the shaft to get to the final fight I threw that check out I'm like, nope. I don't want people like trying to spend 20 minutes to climb up the shaft to get to the final fight. I just threw that out. Um, Sometimes it's not easy to climb up a shaft. No, I know. <laughs> um, and then the final battle, especially when they're slippery. The final battle, I was missing the pack tactics with with the Kakari. I was missing that. We didn't miss it. You had a lot of misses. Yeah, you guys didn't miss it. We left out. Is yeah. <clears throat> right? Because I was forgetting my pack tactics. So. <laughs> Balance it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Everything else is pretty much. You had to kill the beak and the tendrils and then to close it. It said you could close it in a number of different ways, the most mundane of which was making that same DC 15 strength athletics check. Um, but it gave a couple other options too, and I just decided <laughs> that once you were around it, you could close it. Um, it. It did say that the characters working together could close it. So I'm like, okay, that's what we're going to do right now. Okay. Um, so that was that. Uh, failure to close the portal. Um, after 10 rounds, my Celerex arrives and rips the meteor asunder, permanently opening the rift. My Celerex is unconcerned with the characters and after breaking the meteor, begins to yank out huge shags of fungus from within the portal. Fungal monstrosities soon uh, begin pouring forth from another world. At this point, it would be best if the characters simply fled. If they stay, they will surely be killed. See the failure to close the portal section of ending the adventure from where to go from there. Um, and so that, that I, oh, failure to close the portal was what I just read. Um, um, there, I, I believe that there was some other things that I didn't include that basically say if you if you're inserting this in a campaign and they don't close it, here's a whole bunch of things you can do once the fungal infection starts to spread from this area. Now that now this is a part of your main campaign, right? Essentially, yeah. yep. Right, surviving yep. this so, world, right? Random fungal encounters. Yep. Um, Major world event. So, Greg, stars and wishes. Oh, shoot. Stars are things. You, <laughs> stars are things you like. Uh, wishes are things you'd like to see. Um, it can be about this particular session. It can be about the whole adventure. I mean, if you want to include both, please feel free. Okay. Um, stars. That was fun. I think um, <laughs> that was fun. 
that maybe, and I don't know why I'm saying this, but maybe it could have been a little more, a little more scary. A little more what? A little more scary. Yeah, Greg was not scared. I think that has more to do with our group dynamic than anything. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't respond well to horror in this group. We just giggle about it. It's kind of <laughs> disturbing. Oh, no, we burned this guy alive. What? We burned the guy alive? <laughs> <laughs> Once again, it was Sarah's character. <laughs> oh, these things have tendrils with eyeballs coming out of their face? That's cool. I'm going to peck at them. <laughs> I will say, I specifically chose musical tracks to try to create a little more of a scary Second atmosphere. Yes. Mm-hmm. I did, yes. Oh, cool. um, wishes, I do wish my dice roll better so I could have done some things. Uh, but other than that, it was fun. Just need, just means you need more dice. Yeah. Well, I think you, weren't you the one who bloodied the beak? So you did land a good hit there. That was still key. Yeah. Yeah, that was all I did, but that's all right. Okay. It's low level, right? You get like one thing to do on your turn, maybe two. It's just yeah. how it goes. Sometimes it's good. It's good. Yeah, that's Ricky, Ricky didn't do that much until that okay. cower and beg at the end. And uh, John, really do you have any stars and or wishes for the adventure slash entire adventure? Um, overall, I like the adventure. It's a good adventure. Uh, like I said, um, a, lo- a, a lot of the feel of it being a horror adventure is, yeah, was kind of squelched by the group, but that's okay. That's just, that's mm-hmm. just who we are. Um, the final fight is kind of weird. I felt both pressured and not pressured at the same time. Okay. Um, like, yeah, it, sure, it had, it had a time crunch on it, but... Honestly, when we started damaging the uh, pe- when 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 the beak was damaged in one hit, yeah, uh, or bloodied in one hit, I'm just like, okay, we'll just AOE the thing and we're done. Um, okay, so, so, so the fact that I had so few hit points and it was bloodied in one hit, kind of yeah. took the, the the sting out of that last encounter. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, I got gotcha. you. The constant flood of crickets was nice. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, they uh, they were probably the uh, the biggest threat in the whole thing, even though they were also pretty crunchy. Especially the pack tactics. Yeah, they only had six yeah. points apiece, um, but they had pack tactics, so that, yeah. that that was pretty good. Yeah, so I yeah, so I mean I'd probably bump up the, like the beak tentacle the beak hit points just a little bit. Sure, sure. For me. Okay. Um, so and uh, Oh hi Sebastian. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of a, that's kind of a star and a wish. Okay. Um Overall, though, I, um, I thought the theme was pretty cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Although, like I think what we said before, probably could have used a couple more options in a, in a couple of places. Okay. But Sounds I think good. we went over those already. Okay. Well, that, yeah, I'm good. Okay. Cal, do you have any stars and no wishes? Um, stars, we're getting to play with you all again. It was super fun. Yeah. 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 Do some more one shots awesome. and I can guest star again. Um... And uh, I'm the old there. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> everybody's like, yeah, <laughs> yay. Okay. Hi. Hi. How about this? Yay. Wishes is being like some more enthusiasm from the group. <laughs> you want me to be more enthusiastic? <laughs> I want to get my decisions. <laughs> I did try a little bit. There. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Greg did give me the clap. Um, <laughs> Oh, no, I shouldn't give you the clap. Oh, God. Um, clap for you, yes. Another star was, like, I'm planning on running this adventure when the when I get it for DCC. Yeah. So it would be interesting. It was awesome to be able to play it yep. before I run it. Yep. And also, the, I really liked you doing the going over it from a DM perspective. Because yep. I'm like, I get to learn things. Yeah, I'm going to get to know. Yeah, because cause you backed the project, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did Kyle the DCC Jeff, one, uh, the Dungeon Call Classics version. So yep. it'll be interesting to see the differences because I'm not super. I played some DCC, but I'm not super competent with it, so I don't DCC know how. DCC can be brutal. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I'm wondering how they handle like because it seems like there was a lot of checks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the, like the five E's kind of famous for skill checks and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't remember exactly how DCC handles checks, but. Um, I'll find out. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'm definitely planning on running this once I get it, and um, it was awesome to be able to um, play in it and then have like the overview afterwards was, was really cool. Cool. Um, 
Awesome. And uh, wishes is, uh, again, like hopefully we can do this again sometime yeah. in, the, in the future. Sounds good. Um, but yay. Thanks, <laughs> awesome. All right, Kate, do you have any stars in your wishes? Excuse me if I get a baby on here. Yeah, the baby's um, in your lap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, let's see. Big stars that we actually won. Yay. yay. I wasn't sure <laughs> how that was going to go. I, have uh, <laughs> I mean, I do think that, like, kind of following on John, like, for the something that relieved me throughout because of how potent the enemies were was that they had those lower hit points so that if you actually managed to hit them yeah. they were fairly crunchy because things are so swingy at second level mm. so yeah. and especially with I, I would agree with John like if, if someone is playing with a party that's like fighter healer heavy mm. or you know very 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 tactical right like mm. it might be good to beef up those hit points just to add to that challenge and that fear right but for mm. our group I think it could have gone either way, depending on how the dice went. So I, I, okay. mean, I had fun with it. I love the adventure and the story and all the complexity overall. Uh, I absolutely adored our party and our roleplay dynamic. <laughs> wit was just hilarious, especially in the last fight with all those dice rolls that were just so perfectly wit anyway for behaviors <laughs> to pick up on or enhance. <laughs> So that was really cool, um, and and I'm glad that Jin survived and Ricky survived. So we so, still yeah. have continuity if we want to use them later at yeah, higher I've, levels and other campaigns. Yeah. And then, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, need, I need to remember <laughs> what level he was before we started this. Cause I can put right. Him back. <laughs> And then I think it yeah, wishes that not really much at this point. I had a good time, so thanks to Jeff for letting us play it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, stars and our wishes. Oh, okay. Uh, stars is uh, role playing with all of you wonderful people. First of all, <laughs> um, you guys always make it so much fun to just be here and be my weirdo self and uh, <laughs> bring characters like wit to life. Um, the campaign itself was uh, refreshingly different from what I've played in the past. Okay, that's cool. Which I genuinely really enjoyed. Um, I know that checks can be really frustrating, and especially when they're high and our party wasn't really strong at all. <laughs> strong. Ideally built. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of strength checks, and we don't have a lot of strong characters. Yeah, <laughs> but that also kind of adds to the the anxiety and the, oh my god, are we really going to survive this? Which is something that I find that a lot of 5e adventures kind of lack nowadays. Sure, sure. So that was pretty awesome. Um, wishes? I would love to see more. Sure. Of the of the whole world, I really love the the setting. I really love the creatures. It's very cool. It's very unique. Okay. And uh, I really cool. loved it. So thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my stars and her wishes. Um, Star is absolutely having my good friend Kyle come play. Yeah. Um, we were playing D and D together like thirty years ago. <laughs> we're still playing D and D together. Um, so I'm really excited about that, and um, the rest of you are terrible. Um, <laughs> that tracks. Boo. I boo that. Don't worry, we agree. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I thought the overall theme of the adventure was very fun and very interesting. The whole like everything is fungus and and having the crickets in it and, and tentacles and all this kind of stuff. Like I don't really like I don't really like like Cthulhu type stuff. I don't like technically Cthulhu type um, things. Needed more Cthulhu, in my opinion. <laughs> Some people love Cthulhu. I'm not trying to say anything bad about it. It's just not my style. Um, and uh, but I did. I really liked the adventure. I thought that Jeff did an awesome job of writing it and having a lot of really fun, interesting things to explore and um, having different ways of going through different areas because that gives it a replay uh, value to it. Where like if Kyle's running this for multiple groups or something, or if I am, people might go through the spore weaver nest before they go to the entrance hall and they might go down through the hole and go to the cave and you can go into the, the caves through the crater or through the river pathway where you guys went so that that Jeff said that's a big part of DCC is trying to have lots of replayability in it so I thought he did a great job of writing it um, you know I did cut out a lot of content that I just thought was laborious and was not going to be fun um, things that I think that a party that normally does um this style of adventure the the old school renaissance the osr style like people like that i think would love this adventure um and when i spoke to jeff about some of the things that you guys had done he basically described an osr party as people who like inch along with like a pole 
mm-hmm. and they check everything constantly yeah. as they go. Yeah. Um, Which is okay. usually how we are. And I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just like like it, it's it sounds like it's a little bit of a difference between the way that the way that we would play usually and the way that OSR groups tend to play usually. Um, but yeah. I'm in, so I I cut out some things that I I just didn't think it would be fun for me to. To, to, to do it and to have you guys um, actually go through it so I cut some stuff out some of it like I said Jeff had put in there and said if this is not fun don't use it and so I threw it away other things like climbing up the shaft I just didn't want to deal with that at all um, so I threw that out and that that's a personal preference it's, it's nothing against the adventure I thought the adventure is a really good OSR adventure um, and again I just I love the way it was written I thought it was very interesting and very fun very different like Sarah said and um, Casey's artwork, Jeff's wife, uh, it, it's it's amazing. And I've been putting it on Instagram so mm-hmm. people can see different pieces of the artwork. And uh, I thought that it was it was really well done. And uh, I really had fun playing it, even with some of the things that I forgot or modified in the moment. <laughs> I still, as a DM, really had a lot of fun running it. And uh, I've spoken to Jeff about doing other cross promotions like this in the future. And, uh, and I know the basic setup for his next... Uh, adventure. Um, I don't remember exactly what level it is, and I won't talk about any of the any of the setup or whatever because I have no idea when this is going to be. He talked about doing a a DCC adventure that has zero level characters. The funnel. So, so that's not funnel. something that we would do. Um, <laughs> yeah. But he gave me like the next five V one that will probably also be a DCC one. He's like, here here's a Google Doc. I'll share it with you. So I read the intro. And I'm like, I think this would be a lot of fun to run. So uh, we will almost certainly do more cross promotions like this in the future, and we may just insert them into whatever campaign is going on. Like we're, we're going to go back to my Dragon Birth campaign after this session, um, and we will continue with that campaign, and we will use probably more of Jeff's adventures in the future. So thank you, Jeff and Casey. It was thank great. You. Thank you, Kyle, yeah, thank for you. coming and playing with us. Oh, thank you. We'll have you come back again awesome. in the really future. Fun. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> Round of applause. <laughs> Round of applause. Yay! Hey, this time it's not just Greg giving me the clap. <laughs> it's a whole group. <laughs> Kyle. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's say goodnight to the listeners. Good night. Good night, listeners. Good night, listeners. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review anywhere this podcast can be found. Our social media links, plus additional content, can be found on our website at knightsofroleplay.com. Please tell your friends about Knights of Roleplay, an adventuring podcast, and spread the word through social media. Your help and support are greatly appreciated.